Hi everyone, my name is Neus and I am a biomedical scientist and researcher based in Sydney. The reason I'm making this video is because of the current state, uh, state of Australia's East Coast. Um, you may already know that Australia's East Coast has been burning for way over a month now and I found it was really confusing to understand the effects of that in the air pollution in New South Wales particularly. I realised that the information available was a bit confusing and there was nothing really um, easy to follow so I did a bit of research because I needed to know what was happening and how I could protect myself. After doing that research and realising everything that's actually involved with the air pollution currently in New South Wales, I wanted to share this with all of you because as a citizen, as a scientist, I found it was uh, my duty to um, inform everyone of what uh, the effects of this pollution can be on everyone's health and what everything that's been talked about actually means. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain a few concepts and a few ideas that I found um, and all these facts are based on uh, Australian government sites, US government sites and uh, World, World Health Organization uh, fact sheets. So I will put uh, in the description below all the links so that you can also read them and inform yourself further and uh, read about it if you have more questions. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to start uh, explaining first with what AQI means. So AQI stands for Air Quality Index and it is an index that reports the daily air quality in a particular area. Um, it will tell you how clean or unhealthy the air in that particular area is and it basically does that by um, measuring the ozone levels, nitrogen dioxide levels, particulate matter, carbon monoxide and sulfur dioxide. Um, Environment New South Wales official webpage um, has, an uh, um, has an hourly rating uh, turnaround that will give you that information. So if you go onto this website, that I'll put it also on down the bottom, um, it will give you your hourly rating of all these different uh, components in the air, so that you can know you know what the air quality is and what why is if it's low or if it's poor, why is it bad for your health, what causes it. So basically, um, the Environment New South Wales official page, sorry I'm, I'm looking at all my notes so that I don't forget what everything that I want to tell you. So basically the one uh, New South Wales page uh, rates from very good to good, fair, poor, very poor and hazardous levels of the air quality and it does that by also giving it a number range. So 0 from 33 is very good. Zero, um, 34 from six to 66 is good, fair um, is 67 to 99, poor is 100 to 149, very poor will be between 150 to 199 and hazardous would be around 200 uh, and above. So um, the website also breaks it down in a way that you can understand um, and it makes it a bit easier to figure out why it's happening uh, in the air at the current moment. So at the moment the main reason for um, air pollution in New South Wales is particulate matter, both PM10 and PM2.5. So you may have seen these two values or these two numbers um, and you may be wondering what, what are they mean, what do the letters and numbers mean. So PM stands for particulate matter and the number stands for the size. So particulate matter PM10 uh, is anything that is uh, a diameter of 10 microns or smaller and PM2.5 is equivalent to diameter of 2.5 microns or smaller. So just so you get an idea, these are really small particles that can barely even be seen with an electron microscope. So why is particulate matter so important? This is one of the facts that I thought it was really shocking when I realized is that uh, according to World Health Organization, PM particulate matter is the most common indicator for air pollution and it affects more people than any other pollutant. Um, and it's mainly composed of sulfates, nitrates, ammonia, sodium chloride, black carbon, mineral dust and water. PM10, so the 10 microns, uh, can penetrate and lodge deep into your lungs. Um, but what's even more shocking is that PM2.5 microns can penetrate the lung barrier and get into your bloodstream. So any of the small particulates can get into your bloodstream and have um, health um, detrimental health effects. 
if you are in the presence of these particulates. What's even more important is that there is a qualitative relationship between the exposure to high concentration of small particulates and increased mortality or morbidity, even if, um, if it's only a daily exposure and over time as well. So if you are exposed to high levels of these particulates for even if it's just today at a high concentration, those will have health effects. That's also really important to know is that there is no low threshold for what is considered safe. So there's no amount that has been tested that, that has not given um, health effects after the exposure. So even the lowest amounts of PM or particulate matter um, exposure will have health effects um, in the short term and in the long term. So according to New South Wales standards that they are based off a, uh, World Health Organization recommendations, the ambient um, air quality of particulate matter, PM10, um, are, they cannot be over 50 micrograms per cubic meter and average over 24 hours and 25 micrograms cubic meter average over a year. So your daily intake over a year shouldn't exceed 25 micrograms cubic meter and for particulate matter 2.5 the average on a day should maximum be 25 micrograms cubic meter and for average over a year it shouldn't exceed 8 micrograms uh, cubic meter so within Australian standards we in New South Wales um, we do comply within those standards majority of the time uh, PM 2.5 has been a little higher in 2018 with a maximum of 10.1 micrograms cubic meter um, a day average over a whole year but that is not extremely high but what's been happening in the last month month and a half is that we have been above that those levels and it is for way over four weeks now so that means that we've been at unusual levels for New South Wales that would be um, deemed unhealthy and that can have detrimental effects. So in a short term um, we can have lung inflammation, respiratory symptoms like coughing, sneezing, um, really dry throat and mouth. Um, we could have adverse effects on cardiovascular system, increased medication use, uh, increased hospitalization and increased mortality. Um, in the long-term exposure uh, it can increase lower respiratory system, uh, lower respiratory symptoms, um, reduce lung function in children and adults, increase chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, reduce life expectancy mainly due to cardiopulmonary mortality, and probably to due to lung cancer as well. So, the current levels have been fluctuating um, over the last month, but even the last week, it's it, there's areas in New South Wales that have reached hazardous levels. And um, I had this need to understand what that meant for me and for the people uh, that are exposed to it. So who is actually affected by these levels? So um, anyone can be affected by air pollution and uh, especially if you are uh, exposed to it by prolonged periods of time and prolonged periods of time can range between weeks to months. The most susceptible people um, to these are also people who suffer from asthma, people who have lung disease and respiratory conditions like COPD, so chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder, uh, also known as chronic bronchitis, um, cystic fibrosis, lung cancer, um, among other uh, respiratory conditions. People with a cardiovascular disease, so heart problems are also at risk. Um, unborn babies are also at risk, which means pregnant women need to take care and be really careful um, to what levels of pollution they are exposed to. Um, air pollution as mo and smoke is thought to have uh, the same effects on cigarettes on the fetus development. So if you think about it, if P uh, PM 2.5 particulates can uh, get into your bloodstream, from the bloodstream that will circulate to the placenta and the baby will be receiving those um, pollutants as well. So it is really important that you do take care of that um, and I'll explain uh, a few things that you can do um, to protect yourself. Um, children are also at risk because they are and still in the development space and they normally tend to be more outdoors and more active than um, the majority of people 
and as well as older adults and elderly, they may have weaker immune systems or undiagnosed respiratory or cardiovascular health conditions that can um, be exacerbated by the, um, by the presence or being exposed to these air pollutants. So now that we know what it means, where can we find them and what they do, what can we do to protect ourselves? So there's a few things that we can do. Um, we can firstly check uh, your air quality index and find the, level the levels of pollution in your area. So make sure that you know what the air quality in your area is and you can do that by either looking at different apps or websites. I like particularly two apps that are really good because they give you um, a bit of a prediction of what's going to happen on the, the next 24 hours as well. So the apps that I use are Air Visual and Plum, which is P-L-U-M-E. As I said, I'll write all this up on the uh, description below as well. And they both give you a breakdown of how much, um, they give you a breakdown of the air quality as well as how much uh, particulate matter is in the air. Um, air Visual even gives you the micrograms per cubic meter and of that day or the average as the day goes. So that's really useful to know um, to understand yourself as well, what are you being exposed to? Because it's not just only telling you that the air quality is poor or like, you know, if the air quality is bad or not, it's also telling you why it's bad. What's the main pollutant in it? And then the other website that you can check is the New South Wales Environment one, which is the current air quality and it's, um, it updates hourly and it will give you as well a breakdown by different uh, suburbs and areas in New South Wales. The second thing that you can do is know uh, when uh, air pollution can be bad. So if you know that air, there is bushfire, there is bushfires occurring right now, that is a sign that the air quality is going to drop. So if by any whatever means you do not have access to the websites or the apps, but you do know that there's um, bushfires, be careful and take the steps that you need to to protect yourself. The third thing that you should do is definitely avoid physical exercise outdoor and reduce the time outdoors as much as possible so that you are not exposed to the pollution. Um, if you do need to be outdoors, wear a mask or a respirator. Uh, so it is really important that you choose a particular respirator and that it is a P2 grade, N95 or NIOSH. Um, these are the standards that you need so that you know for a fact that it will filter the, the particulates appropriately. Some masks um, that are just a little um, piece of cloth or like even paper um, and they're not sealed on the side of your mouth will not necessarily uh, filter out all the nasty particles, the ones that are the most hazardous. They might be useful for aerosols or liquid so that um, they protect you from that but they don't necessarily protect you from the particulates because remember the P2 point, PM 2.5 are extremely small particles. So any hardware store should have them or even chemists. Um, in Australia the two best options is to go to Bunnings or Officeworks, they will stock them and um, Amazon, a, uh, Australia Amazon also has some um, and you will see it on the mask so this is the one that I have. The mask, um, I don't know if you can see it but the mask will have uh, numbers and it will tell you, it will have those details written down. It will have either P2, either N95 or N99 or N NIOSH. Um, some chemists will also have some disposable ones that they want use only. Uh, so if you need those, you can also use them, but those do not filter or, uh, as much as these that this one have a carbon filter as well. That can be replaced if need be. Um, Yes, the other thing that you can do, because these uh, particular respirators will filter out a lot of the particles going in, which means moisture will also be lost, um, is consider adding a, a wet uh, gauze or some sort of paper towel inside your mask so that it provides still humidity for your um, respiratory um, ducts. So your mouth and your nose will not completely dry out and leave you that sensation of uh, being out of breath as well. Um, Another really important thing to not forget is to clean your eyes. Your eyes will be exposed to the dust and to the particles as much as um, your respiratory system. So uh, consider uh, buying saline and washing your eyes or some sort of eye drops that will keep your eyes moisture. For example, for myself, I got myself some um, saline solution and some um, 
triple action dry a relief with osmo pro osmo protection um eye drops that they are single use and i can just put them on when um when my eyes are really dry um and last but not least another really important thing to consider is uh to consider maybe even getting an air purifier if your um if your area is highly polluted and if you think that the pollution is not going to go uh, away anytime soon as well as if your house is not sealed um really properly and you can feel the air or you have air ducts that connect to the outside the other really important thing is uh, to, that the air purifier is a, filter, a carbon filter or HEPA filter, so H-E-P-A um, and that's because you want those small particulates to be removed from the air so that you don't breathe it. Um, it is really important that if you decide to use your air conditioning to filter the air, you know for a fact that your air conditioning has HEPA filtered um, has HEPA filters so that you do not get air from the outside into your uh, room or into your house that will uh, have those particles. Um, because if you use an AC that does not, doesn't have the proper filtering, you will be pretty much getting air from the outside into your house without filtering out the chemicals and the particles that are um, going to affect you. And I think these are all the um, different tips that I can give you and all the information that I've managed to gather. Um, I've seen how little information there was available so I wanted to inform myself as well as inform you all. I have to give a big thanks to my colleagues in um, the office that they do research in respiratory and they have allowed me to pick their brains and ask uh, all the questions I had. So please feel free to send me messages or write me on the comments and I'll try to get back with you if you have any more questions. Thank you so much. Bye.